So I'm sure you ask yourself this question as well. It's like, why is it that some things are just much harder to do even though we know we want to do them, we need to do them? It's like, let's say, staying in shape, working out. Working maybe on a side hustle, building a business, maybe filming a YouTube video, but then we just fall back into just spending all the times in our phone, on YouTube, Instagram, watching videos, eating the foods that are maybe not the best for us, procrastinating like crazy. I fall into it again and again as well, but I developed a little bit of a process for myself. Well, let's say I discovered it. And recently, actually, I did it maybe even to an extreme. I want to share with you the story of how I set out myself on a lonely, secluded island. So at first I did a little trip with some people and then I said like, hey, can you actually leave me here on the island for a few days without running water, without any electricity, without any form of a mobile phone connection. Very basic food, water to drink and nothing to do. And I did that for three, three and a half days and today i want to share with you let's say the concept of dopamine detox how this little neurotransmitter is connected to the fact that we get addicted to doing things why it's so hard to do the hard things it's so boring at times you need so much focus but you know just cannot get yourself together and what i do almost every few months to kind of like reset my life a little bit and my goal was really to reset a little bit, not consume anything, not do anything. Let's say I had this problem. I was just spending too much time on a social media, especially on YouTube, consuming all the time, educational content, some entertainment, some funny videos. And I just said like, hey, I really want to cut myself off and for a day force myself to do nothing. Force myself to be bored in some way. And what I did is basically the first day on the island, I didn't do really anything. I walked around a little bit, obviously absolutely beautiful and breathtaking. And that probably gave me a little bit of a dopamine hit for sure. But I gotta say, after a few hours, I was almost like, is there maybe some form of a connection here? And I was almost about to fall back. But then I said, hey, just sit down, just breathe, just do nothing basically. And at first, my mind was really rushing. I really had urges. I really wanted to do something, but I promised myself to not do much on the first day. A lot of thoughts, a lot of reflecting on the past few months and years, but definitely a little bit of a hard day. The next day, what I did is allowed myself to do a little bit something. I had a book with me that I started to read, and I gotta say it was the first time actually in the last years where I fully dove into a book. I gotta say, I ate it up. I absolutely loved it. I read like 100 pages, which I haven't done in a very, very long time, and I absolutely loved it. The same day, this day, I obviously have my phone with me, listening to, let's say, a little bit of ambient music, nothing too crazy, eating basic food once again, washing my clothing, it was time to do that hanging this stuff and uh, yeah day number three i was working out actually uh, the days before i got a little seasick uh, but then felt a little better got a little workout and felt felt really really good and i gotta say even though it was hard it was an experience of a lifetime you might be thinking like hey why are you telling me this story and I'm not on a secluded island like where's the application you see for me that was a more extreme way of something that I practice pretty much every few months sometimes every few weeks if I find myself just being overwhelmed with all the daily triggers of Instagram of YouTube and kind of like you wake up you start you check out your Instagram it's exciting it gives you a little bit of dopamine hit and to look at basically what dopamine is, just a quick Google search away, I don't want to, let's say, talk above my pay grade too scientifically here, but it says um, dopamine is being released in pleasurable situations and it stimulates you to seek out those situations again. So food, sex, several drugs, and just also the daily small things, like every, everything that you watch, laptop, phone, and for me, that is really the biggest addiction as for many of us. Our phones is always on us. 
Um, as almost a survival instinct, our uh, physiology makes us seek out this little dopamine spikes for us to feel good. We need it. And the thing is, if we get used to, let's say, the path of least resistance, the easiest way of getting this dopamine spike, what happens to us is that we also seek it out. And if we once get in a loop and we get enough dopamine, or let's say we get into the loop, we just don't really want to do the harder things that also give us a lot of dopamine. And you see, the thing with dopamine is that in the most severe example, it is kind of like a drug addiction. I'm sure you have maybe seen or heard that sometimes if people really go down the road of that, that the only thing that their life surrounds it, around is getting the substance to get this feeling and every else, everything else becomes a little bit meaningless. The things that you used to enjoy are not as enjoyable anymore and to really come off of that is really, really hard. And the thing with, let's say, small little bad habits and let's say very easy ways to get the quick fix, it's somewhat similar, but luckily it's easier to get off of it. And actually I got around to really think about the topic of dopamine after I watched the interview, how dopamine gets you addicted to politics, sex and drugs. Uh, by Valuetainment with Daniel Z. Lieberman. I highly recommend it. I will link it down below. And basically he talks about the fact that everything that we do is basically connected to the fact that our brain is uh, searching for ways to get dopamine. And if we're gonna allow it, if we're gonna let it go unchecked, it is always gonna go for the path of least resistance. It's always gonna go for the easiest way. And the way of basically how I, I like sometimes I allow myself to, to, you know, just have fun, to just relax, enjoy. Maybe if I'm like in a new country, right now doing a lot of traveling. If you're new here, this is what my channel is for the most part about. Obviously, right now, that's a little bit on, very much on the low, just staying here. And um, you see, in the first days, I really tried to cut out everything that just spikes my dopamine. So, no social media for a few days. If you sometimes see me completely being off, of Instagram, this is what happened. I delete the app from my phone. Obviously, it's connected to my business, so I cannot really fully do it. With Instagram, actually, I do. Sometimes I still maybe upload a video or two, but I also highly limit my access to internet. Sometimes if I come to a new country, I don't get a SIM card, especially for the fact, because when I'm out and about, I don't wanna get the notifications, at least for a week or two. I just ease myself into, let's say, um, detoxifying, if you will, it's not like you don't get any dopamine, you obviously do, but it's just much lower and let's say your tolerance is just being decreased a lot. So other things that are maybe not as fun if you have your phone all the time, if you have nice foods, if you have maybe someone who you can have some fun with, uh, it just, this, let, let's say the tolerance that you have really decreases after a few days, this is what I experienced, is where you're like, after the first day on the island, I was super bored. I was like, this book, I love it. Then to have a workout, you feel like it's again, a privilege because you force yourself to be bored, you know? And uh, the thing is, all other things become not interesting when you're getting your dopamine too easy. If you're really in the loop, it's almost like I sometimes struggle so much to turn on the camera. I struggle so much, so much to wake up in the morning if I've been really enjoying myself a little bit too much, really doing all the things that I know I like in the moment, but that don't bring me any long-term satisfaction. That's really the big thing with dopamine. It's like you get the dopamine, but you don't get the satisfaction, the long-term satisfaction for it. It's like, we all know it. We go to the freezer, we get all the ice cream that is in there, we eat it up, we're like, yeah. And then you sit there like, oh, maybe that was a little bit too much. It kind of tasted good, but you're not satisfied with yourself. You're not happy with yourself in most cases. That's really the thing with the dopamine detox. You're not detoxifying yourself from dopamine, you're just lowering your tolerance again so other things become more exciting again. You can actually start picking up a book, like in the beginning when I started to read again last year, really, let's say religiously, every day. Uh, I notice I always fall off if I use my phone too much, if I listen to podcasts and videos too much, just because it's so much easier to listen, to get the information. And then if you actually read this book, you don't get the dopamine. But if you force yourself for a few days, maybe to not do anything for a day, like a real dopamine detox, and then you let it back slowly into your life again. And uh, this is also why I personally started to read books, like in my 5 a.m. video, this is also why I, let's say, wake up in the morning to, for the most part, not do anything. Usually I work out in the morning and I give myself this dopamine hit by working out. And this is, let's say, my other concept. 
how I reprogram my mind to really enjoy doing the hard things. I wake up early in the morning and I'll allow myself to maybe have a coffee and have a nice workout. And if I ate well, like just enough the day before, I will have an amazing workout and I will feel so, so good about myself. And I keep doing that for a few weeks. Then actually, you know, doing the work, in the beginning it's hard, like editing a video, you have to put all of this stuff together. But later on, if you're done, you get a dopamine hit and you also get the long-term satisfaction. You know you're doing the right thing for yourself. And then by not allowing yourself to get caught up by the easy stuff, like watching something all the time, checking on your social medias all the time, having the easy foods all the time, it's like you recondition yourself to only get the pleasurable hormones, the dopamine response from actually doing the more hard things. Sometimes I stack it up by actually rewarding myself. If I, I tell myself, hey, pull through on the next day, have the workout, film this video, get it done by 3 p.m. and then, you know what, then you can hang out, you can have a little bit of a, let's say, Netflix night, <laughs> uh, have some fun foods, and this is how I recondition myself to enjoy doing the hard things. Do a little bit of a dopamine, dip, dopamine detox for one day and then I slowly ease myself into doing the things that I enjoy doing, but now they're actually really, really fun. Okay, so with that, I hope you enjoyed today's little insight, a little bit more of a mindset video, something that I do a lot more on my second channel. You can check it out in the description. I will link it and there I included an uncut version of almost half an hour where I give you a little bit more details, a little bit more uncut, unscripted. Well, let me know your story below in the comments. Have you experienced something similar? Have you maybe experimented with a dopamine detox? If not, maybe you should consider it. But with that, thank you very much for watching. Gently tap the thumbs up button if you haven't yet, and we're gonna see each other very soon.